So hello everyone. I wanted I want to welcome you to getting started with Layout Builder for Drupal 8 and 9 here at Badcamp 2020 virtual edition. Um, so Layout Builder. Well, before I get started, I just wanted to hold some space for a moment for Black Lives Matter. Uh, it's something I feel really passionate about, uh, as well as Canopy, who I work for. And uh, it, it's something I just feel is really important in this day and age. Um, okay. So who am I? Uh, I'm a senior Drupal support engineer at Canopy Studios. Um, on social media, you can find me uh, Dan, at Danny underscore Englander, uh, Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I have a Drupal blog. I've been blogging for about 10 years, um, all things Drupal. So I go back to Drupal 6 on my, uh, on my um, blog. And of course, Canopy is canopy.com. And I, I'd, look, I'd like to just mention that uh, I've been at Canopy for a few years and I've been really inspired by working with such wonderful folks there and especially Ann Stefanik, our CEO and fearless leader, um, and all the other wonderful folks there. So it's just been an incredible experience. And so that's a great segue into, uh, into this screen right here where Canopy is hiring. Uh, so we're looking for some Drupal folks and some WordPress uh, folks and a project manager. So um, yeah, check us out, canopy.com slash careers. So here's what we're going to cover in this uh, in this session. Um, so what is Layout Builder? Uh, what versions of Drupal does it work with? Who is it for? Anatomy of a Layout Builder page. Is Layout Builder extendable? Building with Layout Builder. Theming with Layout Builder. And I'll do a live demo as well at the end. Uh, and then, of course, I'll be happy to answer any questions along the way. Okay, so what versions of Drupal does Layout Builder work with? Um, so Drupal, or uh, Layout Builder started in Drupal Core as an experimental module in Drupal 8.6. Um, and uh, Drupal 8 has had this notion that you can have uh, experimental modules that that people can try out and then eventually if they become stable then they're made stable so by Drupal 8.8 .8, layout builder was stable in Drupal core and then also now in Drupal 9 it's stable and the demo site I'll be showing you is Drupal 9 uh, but it also you know pretty much the same thing right now there's not a huge difference uh, between Drupal 8 8.8, 8.9, and Drupal 9. Uh, that'll be changing a bit, I think, towards the end of the year uh, when Drupal 9.1 comes out. Uh, but for now, you know, there's pretty much a lot of similarities. Um, there are some deprecations in Drupal 9 of Drupal 8 code, but other than that, Layout Builder will function and act pretty much the same. Okay, so I, I just wanted to, before I get going, since this is geared towards beginners. I just wanted to define some things uh, in case you're not familiar with certain uh, certain terms that I might use along the way for Drupal. Um, so I wanted to define a content type, also referred to as a node type. And so, for example, you might have a blog content type or a landing page content type or a person content type. Those are common you know, standards uh, that you might have on a website. Um, and each of those might have, you know, various different fields. Like for example, a person content type might contain, you know, numerous fields, for example, you know, contact info, phone number, email, website, uh, address, things like that. Um, okay. And taxonomy uh, in Drupal is also known as a vocabulary. Uh, so if you might be familiar with WordPress, that would be things like tags and categories. Um, and we refer to things like that as taxonomy terms 
that's that's a common convention. So it's really just a fancy uh, just a fancy name for uh, things like tags and categories. Um, now entity, that's a biggie. That's something really important in Drupal. Um, as Drupal 8 came about, uh, more and more things were entities. So entity is a type of data. So we just mentioned content type is an entity type, uh, taxonomy, uh, users are now entities in Drupal, uh, media entities, you'll commonly see, you know, oh, media entities. Yeah, that's um, basically it's, you know, it can be images, uh, video, remote video, audio, those are all media entities. Um, and of course now in Drupal 8 and Drupal 9, uh, media is in, um, media is in Drupal core. Um, and we also have custom entities. So you can build your own custom entities uh, with Entity Construction Kit, one of my favorites. Uh, so you can do that. Um, okay, views. I won't be covering views too much, but you might hear me refer to it a bit. So um, views is basically in Drupal, a custom database query with a visual interface to build it with. Um, so views is something you use all the time. Um, and of course now in Drupal 8 and 9, it's in core. It used to be a contrib module in Drupal 7. Uh, theming is just a fancy word in Drupal for the styling of a page. Uh, and then here's another biggie, uh, structured modular content. So we have this notion now, like if you've ever used the paragraphs module or perhaps panels or even entity construction kit, uh, you have the notion of styled components, self-contained components that your content editors can work with within a certain framework that are pre-styled. So for example, you might have a hero, an accordion, uh, a call to action. Those are all like styled components uh, or also referred to as what I call structured modular content. Um, so it gives content folks and editors a lot of uh, freedom. And of course, Layout Builder, you can, you can definitely go to town with, it, with all this stuff that I've mentioned here. Uh, and one more thing, view mode. So a view mode is just a type of a display of an entity. So for example, usually you have a default view mode on a content type, but you might also have other view modes that can be called upon to display within either a default entity or on its own, let's say for teaser or, teaser or something else like that. Okay, so what is Layout Builder? Let's, let's go over that a little bit. Um, so Layout Builder is an updated paradigm for structured content, uh, which is what I was just mentioning. Um, it allows content editors and site builders to easily and quickly create visual layouts for displaying content. And of course, it's part of Drupal core. Okay, so here's some things that Layout Builder can do. It's, it's great uh, for uh, content editors. They can customize how content is arranged on a single page and across content types or other entity types for that matter. You can use Layout Builder pretty much anywhere there's an entity. You can use it for media, taxonomy, uh, all kinds of things. Um, you just have to enable it and I'll show you that as well. Um, you can place and order various kinds of content in Layout Builder, blocks, fields, views, user info, taxonomy terms. The list is endless. It's really flexible. Um, it's great for custom landing pages. Uh, and if you were here at the beginning, and I'll show it more after I'm done with this uh, presentation, uh, you saw my little uh, landing page demo there. Uh, so it's fantastic for landing pages. Um, it allows for tons of flexibility for uh, content folks, content editors. Um, it, it's an easy to use drag and drop interface uh, in the Drupal manner. So it's similar to like when you reorder uh, paragraphs or fields in the, in, the, in the UI. So it's really flexible with drag and drop. Um, and structured modular content, similar to paragraphs 
or panels, but it's almost like the next generation. Um, you can leverage custom view modes, which I mentioned, on a per layout builder item basis. So it allows for uh, a lot of flexibility. Um, okay. And uh, it's great for content teams, uh, use, for all, use for all kinds of entities, node, media, user, et cetera. And you can override per entity, uh, and I will show you that. Okay, so here's an anatomy of a layout builder page. Um, okay, so there's a lot going on here. So this is the default managed display for my landing page. So what I've done is I've, I've checked this green box here, uh, use layout builder. So normally you just have a listing of fields here, but once you check this, then layout builder takes over the page and you can use layout builder by clicking on manage layout. Uh, and there's some other options here too. So allow each content item to have its layout customized. So if you were to check that, that means you're no longer bound to the global layout in the content type. You can go into each individual uh, node, if you will, and you can customize the layout on a per node item basis or entity item basis, let's say, because you, know, you might be using it for media or uh, other entities. Um, and then something down here, default restriction for new categories of blocks. Uh, this is coming from the layout builder restrictions module. So you can actually fine tune what your, what your content editors are allowed to put in layout builder. Um, so there's a lot of, if you were to expand either one of these, and I'll show you, uh, that would be, um, you can, again, it's a way of doing structured content where you're allowing certain things to be in Layout Builder and you can exclude certain things. And, and then down here, allow content editors to use stored data or stored layouts rather. Um, so you would check that if you're using a module called Layout Library, which I will also show you, that's key. If you don't check that, then you won't see the select list to choose a layout in the edit UI. Um, okay, so here's some things. Uh, once, you, once you click the Manage Layout button, you will then come to this screen where you can do all kinds of things with Layout Builder. So you have your action buttons, um, you have a content preview. Uh, you can add a section. So over here we have one column, two column, two column bricks. And you can have other layouts in here as well. Um, you can add a block. So once you do a section, then you can add a block. And I'll show you that as well. Um, and this has an example of the content preview right in Layout Builder. Okay, and this supersedes the standard display UI for an entity type. So once you check that use layout builder bo box, then you get all this, this, this goodness here. And this is editing a block in layout builder. Um, now I'm hap I happen to be using layout builder modal here, which expands the area where you can edit this um, into a modal. So you can see here, you have a title, you get an option to display it, you have a label choice. Uh, and the formatter, usually, most in most cases, you'll probably be using the rendered entity with a view mode. Uh, but there are other, other cases where you might just use a label or an ID. But usually, typically, you're gonna be using a rendered entity. And then once you do that, then you can select the view mode which you're using for that. Um, and then this style box, this is coming from a, a contrib module called Layout Builder Styles. And it's great for content editors because you can create a list of predefined styles and then your content editors can choose from, from these. And that would work great if you're using a, a per entity override where your content folks can go in and they can choose they can choose which style they want. Um, and you can just create as many of these as you want in the UI. 
Um, so who is Layout Builder for? It's great for site builders, content editors, uh, marketing, marketing folks, uh, and developers. Okay. And is Layout Builder extendable? Why, yes, it is. Um, so for Layout Builder, there's an ever-growing uh, ecosystem of contrib modules, and I've mentioned some of those, like Layout Builder Styles, Layout Builder Modal, uh, Layout Library, uh, the list goes on and on. And there's a, there's a page on Drupal.org that lists all those. Um, okay. And you can define custom layouts in a module or your theme. And of course, we have layout library, which is great. It allows your content editors to choose from a list of pre-selected layouts. Uh, so they have a select list in, let's say, a, a page edit. And then um, you, can, you can just choose what layout you want to use from a, from a select list. So here's, uh, here's the ecosystem, and I've highlighted a few modules I like. I mentioned Layout Builder Styles. Uh, now, Layout Builder Restrictions as well, that's where you can control what your content editors see to be able to put into Layout Builder. Uh, modal uh, and Component Attributes, I love that module. It's great for developers uh, where you can do things like uh, attributes, uh, classes, IDs, so it's great for one-off things when you're theming uh, to add, let's say, let's say you're using block element modifier, BEM, uh, BEM style CSS. Theoretically, you could use this to add a class as your top-level block class uh, to a component. Um, layout builder library I mentioned, and worth a look. Uh, extra templates, I think. I haven't used it. These these I have not used, but I believe it gives you extra template suggestions if you're a themer. Uh, layout options. It, it looks like it does some similar things as Layout Builder component attributes. You get more UI options for adding things like IDs and classes. I think that's what it looked like. I haven't tried it. Uh, and Layout Builder Kit looks really interesting. It, I think it has some pre-made components, so that looks really interesting. And Radix layouts. So I think if you've ever used, I think it's panels, uh, you might be familiar with Radix layouts. Uh, so that now works with uh, Drupal, the layout builder. And here's this, uh, this, this is the link to all the additional modules uh, in the ecosystem. Uh, so building with layout builder. So some of the key points, uh, custom view modes on a per entity basis, uh, and I'll show you that. Uh, captured by Drupal 8 and 9, config, export, and import. Um, so one thing, let me just quickly show you here. So for example, I just, I just exported this content uh, from my demo site. And as you can see here, we have, uh, you know, I added some new styles um, and they're captured they're captured by that. Okay. So now I put in asterisks here because uh, if you do a layout builder override on an entity item basis, uh, that will not be captured by config, only the global setting. So once you go off and override uh, on, let's say, a per node basis, that will not be captured, but you can always go back to the default if you like. Um, so it replaces an entity display with Layout Builder UI, uh, drag and drop, uh, option to preview in Layout Builder, which you saw in some of my screen captures there, uh, custom layout templates overridable, uh, layout variants with Layout Library. Okay, so here are some, a few ideas for building. So the first one, you can do Layout Builder controlled at the entity type level or you can control it on a per item ba basis uh, with an override, and or you can offer multiple layouts uh, using layout library. So definitely a lot of options uh, for that. 
Okay, and theming with Layout Builder. Um, so here we have, you can see basically there's a lot of theming options here with template suggestions. So if you're familiar with Drupal 8 and Drupal 9 Twig uh, and Twig template debugging, as you can see here, there are a ton of options. So typically you have your layout, uh, you have your field, and then you have your entity below that. So this is a typical paradigm of how theming might work um, for these, these people here. Um, so here you see the manage attributes uh, from the component attributes module. And you can see here we have, you know, a top level class. You can put in some data attributes. Let's say if you were doing some stuff with uh, JavaScript or jQuery, uh, you can put in an ID. So that comes in really handy. I think that's great for themers. Um, and here's the uh, styles, which I showed you earlier. Now, this is something I really love. Uh, a friend of mine who's a developer at another company, he told me about Entity View because I was saying one day, you know, I, I feel like there's something missing from Layout Builder where I want to do a wrapper of fields that are related. Uh, within a layout. So he told me about Entity View, which is great. It comes from, all you need to do is enable the C tools contrib module. So for example, here we see we have an Entity View of a profile card right within this two column layout in between other fields that are rendering separately. So we can have this whole entire card as one contained entity within this layout. So it, it really comes in handy. Um, so I love Entity View, and I'll show you that. I think it's very powerful as well. So it's a great thing to, to keep in mind if you're going to be building the Layout Builder. Uh, and Radix Layouts. Uh, I have not tried this, but it's now for Layout Builder. And Live Demo. OK, so let's take a look here. So um, here's this demo landing page that I've built. So you can see here, we have a hero. Uh, we have some featured people, so I can, I can click on these things. Um, I just have some gibberish in there. Um, and then we have a call to action that I've built and themed. And then we have a quote as well. So we have all these things. And I'll go over here. So the first thing I want to show you in the UI is uh, Layout Builder uh, in core. So to use Layout Builder in Drupal 8 and 9, you need to enable two modules, uh, Layout Discovery, which is pretty much like the API that Layout Builder depends on. So you have to enable that, and then uh, Layout Builder module itself. So that would get you started. These do not come enabled by default in Drupal 8, so you'd have to enable those. So here's our, here's our manage display, uh, and um, you can see I've, I've checked this box here, use Layout Builder. Oh, somebody wants to, me to increase my font size. Okay, let's do that. Is that better? Much better. Okay, great. Excellent. Sorry about that. OK, and then this is more, please, it's too small. OK, so let's make it bigger. Must be my big screen. How's that? One more. OK, how's that? <laughs> is that? How is that now? That's better? Good, 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 perfect. OK, great. It must be my big screen that I'm working on. OK. So we have uh, allow each content item to have its layout customized. So if I do this, that means when I go to edit an individual node, you'll be able to edit the layout on that node as well. Um, so you can see here, this is the layout builder restrictions. So you have all kinds of options uh, where you can you know, allow specific lists. You, so you really have a lot of fine grained control over what your content editors or site builders can see and what they can see. And then um, 
right now I'm allowing all existing and new layouts, but if I do this, then you can see you have a whole host of layouts. And this is what I was mentioning where you can actually create your own layout um, in code. So for example, I created this custom layout, two column bricks, which was something in core, but it wasn't showing up here. I think it was just there to give you an example. Uh, so I, I did my own uh, there, but for now I'll just go back to checking this. Um, and then the other thing is you can also check this, um, but for now I'll just leave it like that. Uh, now if I click this manage layout, you, you come over to this page and then here's your layout builder UI. So you can see here, you can save, discard, reorder sections. Now in my case, I only have one section. So if I go to add a block, you'll see, oh, that's weird, it was on the left side. Um, you see you have your entity view, you have all these others fields here. Now, if you use the layout builder restrictions, you can actually, this is where you can limit what actually shows up here or what doesn't show up. Um, you have different things, you have views, you have menus. Uh, so as you can see, the possibilities are endless. Um, so um, I've used this created that comes in really handy. Um, so entity view, that's what I'm going to talk about here. So let's go over to, um, let's go over to, uh, let's see here. So I'm going to go to content and I'm going to edit this landing page. Okay. So we have our hero here and we have a whole bunch of different entities and fields. So we have, we have text. We have a link, we have an image um, that is all comprises this right here. So if we go back here, so I'm gonna go over to uh, manage display. Actually, let me go here. So if I, if I go to edit this and configure, you'll see here that the view mode is hero. So you can see I have a lot of different view modes here. So the view mode is hero. So if I go back over here and I click on hero, you can see I have just those, just those hero fields in this view mode. So then when I'm back over here, I've chosen that view mode in my entity view. Um, and so it comes in as one, one big self-contained entity that definitely makes it easier for theming. Uh, now you can see here, I have person twice. So if I go out here, um, I have the teaser of all these people, but when I click, then each one has its own uh, additional information, which is in a separate view mode. So if I go over to here, you can see I have the person field for uh, one the first time and we have a rendered entity and the view mode is teaser, but then down here, we have a rendered entity and it's gritter content. So the teaser is up here and then the, the gritter content, which is in line below each one is the gritter uh, entity, uh, view, the view mode, gritter. Uh, so that works out really well. So you're not just limited to add, adding one thing, uh, like this, for example, this person field uh, one time. Now, if I go over to um, the content types in person, you'll see, I'll open this in a new tab, you'll see my different view modes. So I have my, um, I have my teaser where I've chosen uh, person image and their position. But then when I go into the uh, gritter content, I have that info that shows up below where I have bio, email, and telephone. So here we have bio uh, and email and telephone. So that's really powerful. So again, we're using, we're using view modes in Layout Builder 
in the landing page content type. So actually, if I go over here, you can see people, these four people, these are just entity references to, um, to, to that person content type. So if I were to add another one, uh, well, actually that's adding a new node in place. So cancel, uh, so I could add an existing node and you would see here, you know, I could, I could just add another one there. Okay, so that's that. So let's go back to uh, default. And I'll do manage layout. Now, if I if I do show content preview, it doesn't work that great because it kind of it kind of messes everything up. Uh, there's a, there's an open issue on Drupal.org to fix that because what's happening is it puts in some fake text and it's too long and it, it makes it a bit unwieldy. So for now, I'm not really using that too much. Um, so uh, now, if we go here, I'll show you the manage attributes. So that's this is from Layout Builder component attributes. So you can you can put in all kinds of different, uh, and this is the one that I mentioned is great for developers. Whereas if I go here and configure the block itself, we have these styles, which are these pre-made styles, um, which is, I'll show you over here. So this is the Layout Builder Styles uh, UI. Oh, somebody's asking, is that a custom paragraph type? Um, so I'm not using paragraphs at all on this site. Uh, I am using Entity Construction Kit, but uh, Eric, what what exactly, which, what were you, uh, what were you asking about? What you thought might be a custom paragraph type? Oh, what field is that? It was a thing where you could either pick, pick existing entity node or oh yeah 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 okay so that is inline entity form uh let me go back to that yeah that's pretty neat yeah <laughs> uh let me okay so here yeah so these these are in here uh these are just entity references but i have uh inline entity form so where you so the the form display of this is inline entity form, which is a contrib module. So I can either add a new module right in place, so I don't have to go out to that other content type person. I can just create it right here. So that's, yeah, that's a really good module. Um, I love that. And, and it's great for your content editors, definitely to improve UX. Um, or I can add an existing one. So I can just start to type and I would see, you know, I would see all the different uh, existing nodes. So that's uh, this is an entity reference with inline entity form, or sometimes referred to as IEF. Okay, so we're back to layout builder styles. So you have two a few choices here. You can actually, as you can see, you can add them to a section or a component, which is really a block. Uh, so you might have section classes uh, that your uh, that your content folks can can use, or in the block classes, uh, and then you have some settings here, uh, so you can you know you have some different choices um, uh, to allow for them to use. Now here's layout builder component attributes, and this is the one uh, this is the one that I said was good for. Um, good for developers. So you can choose. So if I go back over here um, and uh, let's say I do manage attributes. So you can choose what attributes show up in each one. Um, so, so I could, you know, I, I typically don't like inline CSS, so I didn't allow that. Uh, so you can see there's a whole host of options for that. Um, and here's your layout builder modal configuration. Um, so this is really nice. Um, and that is, uh, let's see, 
So your layout builder modal is when you do manage or configure, here's your layout builder modal, and that's a contrib module. So you would need to add that on as well. These are all contrib modules uh, modal. So this is one of my new favorites. I love this. Uh, layout builder library. So this is fantastic. So if I go back over to, uh, if I edit, um, let's go over to the content edit. Okay, so this is gonna be really cool. So if I edit this and I go to my settings, you'll see here I have a layout option. So right now the default is this standard hero that I've themed. Uh, but if I go back to here, I can choose hero CTA. And this is coming from Layout Builder Library. So I click Save. And now if I reload this, you'll see it totally changes. So we have a whole different type of hero now. Um, uh, and that's because, that's because we have Layout Library. And what I've done is I've created this hero CTA. So if I were to add a new layout option, uh, you can see you can do it for all di different kinds of entities. Um, and this gives the content editors a way to choose from that select list, a list of layouts. So now if I edit this, this is in layout library. You can see I have my entity view just like in the other one, but it's using a different view mode. So this is using the hero CTA view mode rather than hero. And then I've set that, if I go over here and I go back to, um, let's close this. If I go back, uh, I'll just go back one. You can see here, I have my hero, which it was the original with that. And then I have the hero CTA, which also has those fields. And theoretically you could change like what media entity uh, this uses, I haven't changed it but I think I probably would based on the theming that I did. Um, so if I'm over here, back in layout library, you can see here I've, I've done, I've chosen that view mode in this. And then, then when I go back to edit, um, I go back to edit, that's where that's where this select list shows up, Hero CTA. So if I choose none and save, it'll go back to the default that's, that's coming in from Layout Builder proper. So if I reload. Okay. Uh, and I think, I think that's, that's my demo and slides. I'll just, actually, I'll quickly go back here. Um, and I just wanted to mention a few things. Uh, so coming up next, uh, there's a whole bunch of nice sessions coming up at uh, 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. And I see a couple Canopeans in there as well who are presenting and, and the other folks. Uh, and then um, there's also a coffee break, uh, 2.45. And that that is it. So I don't know if, if anybody we have a few minutes left. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions. Where are the blocker component types in that long list defined? Yeah, yeah, okay. Thanks, Max, good question. Yeah, so if we, um, by default, so we'll go back to our, uh, actually, I'll go ahead. Let's go to our default landing page. Uh, um, if I manage this layout, by default, if let's say I want to add a new block, these are all going to show up. These are all just going to show up by default. You don't have to do anything. So the, the power comes in with the layout uh, restriction module. So, so here you can actually, you know, you can allow or restrict so they have a, an allow list or, or a restrict list. Um, so again, we have an allow list and a restrict list. So theoretically, you could, 
you could turn some of these on. So then when you're over in the other screen, okay, so what would you say the main, oh, what admin, oh yeah. So David, yeah, so I'm using the Claro admin theme that will eventually be the default in Drupal 9, but on top of that, I'm using this new admin theme called Jin. Uh, so it's, it's fantastic, I love it. Um, and Eric, what would you say the main issues with this in general? Are there things that are troublesome in general? Uh, how does this work with Drupal views? Um, yeah, so I'd say it's just something, uh, yeah, the slides will be available. I can make them available. I, I would say that the thing for us at Canopy, we just, uh, one of the other developers there, she said, hey, there's this thing called Layout Builder, and we just started using it and playing around with it. And that's what I've been doing on my own time as well. Um, and yeah, you can definitely use views in this for sure. Um, so you don't have to use, um, you don't have to use uh, entity view, although I like entity view from C tools, but, but for sure, yeah, you can, you can bring in views. It works great. Um, in fact, you can even set the view mode on a view, um, for that. Uh, yeah. So can sections layouts be nested? Well, that's what I was talking about with entity view. So if I, if I go back to here, um, actually, let me go to that slide. So if I go back to that slide, here, you can see this is entity view, but this may as well be a view as well. So this is an example of nesting this entity within these other fields. So you have a field called breadcrumb, you have interests, you have topics, and then this would either, this card would either be a view or it, in my case, I'm using entity view, which I love. Um, so yeah, you can use views or entity view. Uh, and that would be great. Wow, really good questions. Uh, thanks, everyone. Um, yeah, right. There's yeah, there's core issues for nesting sections. Yeah. So I think for now, either a view or entity view would be the way to go um, if you need to do that. And then you can then, in a sense, you have a layout within a layout. In fact, you could even so for example, um, let's say uh, let's say I go back here. So in one of my view modes for my entity view, let's say I have hero, I could actually, I could actually use layout builder for that. So um, yeah, it's, it is a tricky UX issue. So you could use layout builder for this entity view that's over in here. Um, so when I go to manage layout, um, when, I, when I set this entity view up and configure, and I choose this view mode hero, that could actually pull in a layout builder layout. In my case, I didn't, but it, you could just as easily do that as well. Um, so uh, yeah, here's our, here's our landing page. And uh, we're almost at time. Uh, I just, I love all these questions. Thank you, everyone. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Um, for matters, are those things exposed for content editor? Oh yeah. Oh shoot, okay. I meant to show this and I didn't. I meant to show this and I didn't. So, okay, so if I go over here, I'm gonna say allow each content item to have its layout customized. So Max, here's the answer to your question. So now when I go to my node, so I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna edit, you'll see now that I've allowed overrides, you now have a magical layout. So imagine if you will, you're the, you're the content editor. So now on a per entity item basis, you can choose the layout and see now we have a new button referred to defaults. So as, you, as a content editor, you could give your content editor certain view modes to use and they could choose all these classes on a per entity item basis. So for example, for this node, somebody could use hero CTA uh, defined as kind of presets. Well, layout library does that as well, which I showed you. Um, yeah. So if I go back over, um, if I go back over, I had layout library. So you might want to, you know, you might want to choose what you're going to do. So this select list is from layout library. So this would be your presets right here. So if you didn't want to allow overrides, this would be your presets, which is coming from layout builder library.
But uh, yeah, I am so, this is wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone. How custom styles can be added to, yeah. Okay, so custom styles. So if we go over to, um, if we go over to structure, con um, uh, configuration, user interface. So if we go over to uh, layout builder styles, so here's where you would add uh, pre-selected styles for your content editors. So you could you can add a new layout builder style, um, you know, and you can add your class and you can choose uh, if it's for a block or a section. So I think that answers that question. So this is from the layout builder styles module. And, you know, you can set the order of these. Um, yeah. Excellent. Yay. Okay. Well, ooh, I think we're at time. So thank you very much, everyone. It was great seeing you all. And um, I believe I, I can probably post the slides on, on the, the Bad Camp page. Okay, take care.